Oh man, it has been absolutely brutal catching fish out here lately. It's super hot. It's, I mean, the sun's just coming up. Uh, it's already like 86 or something. I'm going to be off the water in like two hours and oh, boy, it's just been rough. So I decided, hey, everybody's talking about AI. I'm a nerd. Like, let's see if AI can help. And I'm not talking about like normal, you know, ask AI how to catch bass. I actually want to use it to crunch some data. So I downloaded the Toyota Texas share locker data and put it into ChatGPT. See if I can mine some tidbits. So let's hop on the computer and I'll show you what I found out. All right, guys, we hopped in the nice cool air conditioning. I'm gonna show you how I actually dissect this data using AI ChatGPT. So the first thing I do is I go to the Texas Share Lunker website and click on this download link where you can download a CSV file of all of the Share Lunker records for all time. Now, the interesting thing about this data set is that they changed the Share Lunker program. I think that was in around 2017. So previous to that date, basically to get on this list, you had to have a bass over 13 pounds, which I can't even imagine catching. That's insane. Then after that, uh, from 2018 on, they had different classes, which started at like eight pounds for one class and you know, all up to the 13 pounders. So they opened it up. So you're seeing here, sometimes I'm asking for like dates after 2017, et cetera. That's just to really cut that line in half because it's a fairly different set of data before and after that, that year. So I go over to ChatGPT, do a new chat, and basically what you wanna do if you use ChatGPT at all, if you're a giant nerd like me, you uh, use this code interpreter uh, plugin or feature, I don't know what they call it, but this is nuts. So this is gonna actually read the data I put in there using Python code that it's writing itself. It's kind of mind blowing, dude. I kind of know Python, I'm not a developer, but like watch, like you don't have to know anything to do this, it's nuts. So you upload the file, I always just say like describe it to me, it'll go through, make sure it understands the format. You'll see this data's format a little bit funky because uh, it's got a line that's, um, you know, just, it sorts it out by itself. Like I don't really do anything. And then you just start asking questions like you would any normal person, which is nuts. So you can see here, it's this outputting how it understands the data, what fields are in there, how many entries there are and all that kind of good stuff. It's pretty insane. So the first question I'm gonna ask is just how many bass are in this program over 13 pounds, all time. 647, bro, that is nuts. That's so crazy. But you see, like, I didn't really have to like format it any certain way. I just asked a question straight up. How many you got in there? Now, these could be, you know, the same bass kind of multiple times. I don't think they track a lot of these big fish. And of course, not every bass over 13 pounds ever caught in Texas is in this data set. But still, that is an impressive number of 13 pound bass caught in the state of Texas since about 1989. Crazy. So which lake has produced the most all time? And that's the OG Lake Fork. Amazing, amazing fishery. Haven't gone up there yet. I'm gonna get up there soon, probably in the fall winter time frame. I hope, knock on wood and 250 fish total over 13 pounds. Again, there might be some duplicates in there, I don't know, but that is insane, insane. So let's just look at the top five lakes, right? We know Lake Fork is on top, but who's, who's running up? OHIV, the, the current hottie of the big bass in Texas, 83 overall. Sam Rayburn, a legendary fishery here in Texas, has punched out some huge fish. Alan Henry, which I had never heard of before. I'm sure somebody knows about him. I don't, but pretty amazing. And then the other crazy thing is Lake Austin. Like Lake Austin is in the middle of the city of Austin. Like not really known for large fish that I've heard of before. That's pretty insane. And that might have to do with like the number of people that fish on that lake. I mean, that, that lake gets a ton, a ton of pressure. So if there are ever any big bass in there, they are almost definitely gonna get caught by someone at some point in time. So what if we lower the bar a little bit and say 10 pounders are bigger, DDs as people call them. Where, where are those guys coming from? 
So top three lakes stay the same, Fork, Ivy, and Rayburn. Then Lake Conroe, like that's not too far from my house. I've never really heard about giant bass coming out of there. I think it's a little bit like Lake Austin, right? A ton of people fish there, right? It's close to the fourth largest city in the country, Houston. Uh, so if there are big bass in there, they are almost definitely gonna get caught because so many people are fishing there. But that's cool, I'm gonna have to go check it out. If you know anything about fishing Lake Conroe, leave me all your spots in the comment below. I'll keep them secret. And then Alan Henry again, I, got, I gotta find this lake. I gotta figure out where it is. That's pretty cool. So let's take the top five lakes uh, relatively recently, right? So not any of that old, old crusty stuff from the 90s, right? Like we don't wanna go there anymore. Like who's producing the most bass like recently in the last five years? And this is where you see OH Abbey start to really kind of move up there, right? It is the new hotness. Um, it's out in the middle of nowhere, man. So I don't know the story of OHIV necessarily. Um, you know, I just kind of started hearing about it last year, kind of late in the year. A lot of big fish coming out of there, but um, it's in the middle of nowhere, dude. Like nowhere, Bill. But obviously it's gotten a reputation for big bass and people are pouring in there. I know that the guides are now charging like $3,000 a day for a trip. Try to catch a big bass on OHIV. Like, that's nuts. I pay less than that going offshore fishing for tuna. Like, crazy. Fork in Toledo Bend. Uh, uh, Toledo Bend's another legendary fishing spot in Texas. Again, it kind of made its name same time as Rayburn. I'd say 90s, kind of old school Bassmaster Classic Lake. And then Conroe shows up again. So it's not like Conroe was producing fish a long time ago. It's still producing them today. That's pretty cool. So let's look at like just how many lakes in Texas produce a 10 pound bass at all in this record set. 120 total lakes. And I know from like glancing at this stuff, there's like uh, entries that just, uh, multiple entries that produce like private water and state data. Like, I don't know where those are from necessarily, but it's pretty cool, man. 120 bodies of water produce a double digit bass in Texas. That's cool. So who caught the heaviest one and where and how long was it? This is cool, man. 18 pounder, like what? That's insane. That's a toad that's just mind blowing, mind blowing. Look at this old school picture, like it's cool. So let's take a look at the longest bass because I always think that's interesting length to weight, right? And this kind of blew my mind, 29 and a half inches, but only 12 pounds. Like what? Like the heaviest was 25 and a half. I don't know, was it spawning? Was it full of eggs? Like why, why is that such a chunky fish? And this like long skinny guy is only 12 pounds. Like, could you combine those two and like make some giant world record bass? Like that's crazy, dude. Look at, the, look at this fish. It doesn't really look that much different in the picture to the, the heaviest bass. It's kind of nuts. And the other one only weighed 10 pounds, dude. Like that's like a snake. So let's look at when we should fish for these big boys. Top five by total number of bass over 10 pounds. And really no surprise, it's all kind of winter time around here. And I would say probably the start of the spawn. So, you know, March, April, May timeframe, depending on where you are in the state, that's when the spawn's going on. So obviously these are nest garters or big mamas sitting on a bed kind of thing that people are pulling off. But, you know, you're catching a few in the winter too, which is cool. Now, the other interesting thing, if you don't know much about the weather in Texas, right, our summers are unbearably, unbearably hot. So while there's probably more people on the water in the summer, it's hard to fish all day. Like, I don't think we can't fish all day, right? You're like sun up to 9, 30, 10, maybe 11, then you're off. And then maybe if you're lucky, you'll fish the evening. But in the winter, you can go all day long, no problem. And so again, more fishing, certainly they're spawning, pre-spawn activity there. And it's a great time to fish in Texas. So let's just take a look at all the months, see where they fall, if I can spell. So March has the most, kind of the most by far. Uh, I'd say that's probably peak spawn for most of the state is in March, so makes sense. And I wanted to do a comparison between Lake Fork and Lake Ivy uh, from recent data and kind of my, um, my thoughts were confirmed, right? You can see OH Ivy has really taken off as Lake Fork has gone down. Now, I don't know if that's because uh, Lake Fork is getting less pressure or, you know, a lot of those fish that were the giants have either been removed as part of this program 
or they just kind of got old and died or been killed or whatever and they've just kind of been caught a bunch there and OHIV is just blowing up again like I said I mean look at this like this year already it's only July and pff, dude they already have 64 double digit bass I guess that could be eight pounders and up but still that's an inc insane amount of fish so let's look at the 13 pounders only the real pigs OHIV again 21 in 2022 and already halfway through this year 20 over 13 pounds is everybody catching like the same fish over and over again blows my mind so when should I go to OHIV if I want to catch these big guys now this is interesting July kind of pops up in here and you know I think that could be related to just pressure in general right everybody's kind of taking summer vacation schedule a little bit looser and so you can just fish there more that'd be my guess i don't know because like july is usually dog days for us like it's really tough to get fish you really gotta work hard so what about lake fork when if i, I want to go to lake fork when should i go there yeah june pops up which is interesting but i i, I can still catch bass in june so it's uh kind of post spawn for us not really like just blastingly hot so you can you can kind of fish all day especially if you're on a boat so that makes sense but really you know you're looking at the spawn months here still may june you know post spawn maybe but spawn fish the spawn bro hot bass tip of the day all right dude i'm blown away with the information i was able to pull out of that data the toyota share Lunker data that's nuts you know the, the thing that really blew me away is the longest bass at 29 and a half inches and 12 pounds. I mean, that's a friggin' tank, right? But then the heaviest bass at 18 pounds and only 25 inches. Like, that is nuts. Like, is the the 29 incher like spawned out? Like, what if it was full of eggs? Like, I can't even imagine, dude. Like, that's just crazy. And, you know, the other cool thing was kind of pulled out that Lake Conroe, which is not too far away from me, actually has a lot of big bass in it, which was kind of surprising. But then I started thinking like, hey, Conroe gets a lot of pressure, right? It's super close. There's a ton of people that fish on it. So you're going to pull out the a lot of just good sized bass in there because I mean, it has good sized bass in there, obviously. So that was pretty cool. I mean, I have a lot. I'm in, I'm in Texas, right? I'm in Houston. So we got a lot of awesome bass fisheries in the state of Texas. And the other crazy thing was just how fast OH Ivy blew up. I mean, it's just like not there. And then bagoom. That's the technical term, bagoom. It just starts pumping out fish after fish after fish after fish. But I was also really blown away by the number of bodies of water that have big fish in there, right? Just in general. And that kind of gives me a lot of hope that on kind of almost any body of water in the state of Texas, you can catch a big fish and that's sweet. Hey guys, if I missed a question you wanna know from the Toyota Share Lunker data, leave it in the comments below. I'm also looking for other sources of fish data, uh, largemouth bass, really any fish, but largemouth bass, especially like length to weight data, right? Like, so how long a fish is and how much it weighs. I'm working on, I think will be a way better weight estimator for largemouth bass. We already got one for alligator gar. You can check it out on wmbio.com. Take care, tight lines.